Hello and welcome to a special bonus talk edition of Sports Talk Philadelphia. Uh, I, have the, I have Sam Brown, Tyler Smalls, and Chris Forsythe here with me. We're going to talk some Phillies. And uh, last week we talked about how historic of a collapse they had, and now it's like a part two almost. Um, you know, going into last week's show, we had said that they had really important 11-game stretch, seven of them with the Braves, and the first four games against the Braves, they got swept. Um, they were 78 and 73 a week ago. Now they're 78 and 80. They need to win three out of four games in order to just have a 500 record. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people were expecting this team to not really contend, but um, you know, just a general reaction from you guys. We we were, you know, 15 games above 500, one and a half games up on the Braves, and now we're not even going to have a chance at the division. So you know, general reactions, guys. That's all you. I mean, I have an urge to be upset, but at the same time, I can't really justify it, giving the low outlook that this team had coming into this season. I have to say that I was rather surprised to see them in, the, in first place of the division for several weeks out of the summer. Uh, you know, they were, they were sizable, they had a sizable lead at the time, one that they had to keep winning in order to keep and hope that the Braves don't come back, which unfortunately they did. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. It's disappointing, but at the same time, it's not that we won't be seeing any playoff baseball in this town. No, unfortunately not. And I, 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 I must say this is the most interesting Phillies season I've ever watched. Yeah, um, most of my blame goes on Gabe Kapler. Um, I don't know if you saw his interview last night, what he said. but um, I didn't. What did, what did he say? He just said it was just a bad, bad brand of baseball they've played over the last week. And like, <laughs> the, fact that he's, the fact that he said that himself but, Kind of puts it in perspective, yeah. but, but 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 it wasn't bad baseball three weeks ago, right? When it wasn't we were bad like, baseball all year when, when he it mattered, was exactly. yeah, <laughs> first game of the year when he put the entire bullpen in. But um, now I, it's between him. Um, I'm not going to blame it on Kangaroo because he's a rookie. I mean, Chase Utley had a really bad rookie year. Mike Schmidt had a bad first couple of years. I mean, we all know how they both turned yeah. out. Um, but I I do blame. A lot of it on Adubel Herrera for his bonehead mistakes, and Cesar Hernandez for his weird amount of strikeouts this year. Yeah. Um, but those those are the contributing factors, in my opinion. And although those really did bring down the team, they were an anchor for them. What really set it off, and I said it last week, was the pitching staff. I said that they really need to lower their ERAs, like get more innings out of them so that it was less of the bullpen for the bigger names like Vince Velasquez and Jake Arrieta, and they did the exact opposite, going 0-7 yeah, yeah. since we last talked about them, didn't even win a game. And uh, it, although it was a slugfest with the Braves, like they lost everyone where they put up more than five runs, then they go to Colorado and lose every game by more than 10 runs. I think, you know, going into that Braves series, um, I, I had expected some type of some type of fight, some type of effort, and and in those few, first few games, they they provided that. The mm -hmm. Phillies had a couple of those games in their hands, and they just let Atlanta take it away. Mm -hmm. How are I? The one thing I'm wondering is how are we this far into the season, and your starters can't get past? They can't even qualify for a decision. Like Vince Velasquez going two and a third innings in the in the first game. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what that's not what we're trying to see in September. I, I personally think it's because Gabe Kapler babied them in the beginning of the year. I mean, if you remember when Charlie Manuel was manager, um, he let Roy Halladay go seven innings in like the first appearance. And then you look later in the year, Doc could go all nine. Cliff Lee could go all nine. I mean, we are talking about Roy Halladay and Cliff Lee and Cole Hamels, but still, like Kyle Kendrick could go seven innings solid. Right. Yeah. But I, I think it's just pulling them too early. Like the pitch count, it's just – the baseball now is weird. Yeah. And I, oh, you can go ahead. I think they need to find a more proper balance between this new analytical style of management and the old school management. Like you mentioned, Charlie Manuel letting Doc go out for seven innings in the first game. They have to find a middle ground where they can, they can still get through to the young players who are being raised in this type of system with letting the veteran, the veteran presence uh, employ, their, employ their method of learning the game in the majors at the time that they were young players. And I agree. And once again, with this MLB becoming more of a bullpen-based system of pitching, where as you see some teams start with the bullpen and just go nine innings, new pitchers, it's 
I personally don't agree with it, but that's what MLB is becoming, just because every bullpen has at least five guys that can throw 97 or higher. But if you look at it, the Phillies did not have that bullpen. They could not afford to be that. It was just poor pitching and, once again, babying them, as you said, yeah. rather than anything else. Right, and, and you know, given, given, the, given how the season went, we can look at positives, and let's start with the positives. So Aaron Nola, we knew from the, from the get-go that he was going to have to lead this team, and for the most part, he did. You look at those numbers, you would take those numbers any day of the week. He kind of fell off towards the end, but nevertheless, for the first five months of the season or so, he was stellar. He was a Cy Young Award candidate and whatnot, and then Reese Hoskins, the bat, I want to see that batting average go up. I think everyone on, on, on the panel wants to see that batting average go up. But he did hit 33 home runs, and he could get 35 by the season ends, by the time the season ends. Um, so what, what, what other positives, if, if you want to jump off on them, that's fine. But are there any other positives that you saw this season besides those two? Well, I think those two are the two players who are absolutely not responsible for the bad baseball that we've been getting over the past month and, or over the past two months. Uh, the only thing that you could really fault Aaron Nola with is not holding down the fort in his starts when they might, when they might expect him to get a, to just get a win when they need one. Right. But um, other than that, those two, those two are not to blame for this team's struggles. And there were some other names like if you have Herrera or, who had a, bigger year than I think most expected him or um, Santana who was consistent at first base. But I think. Um, Hoskins and Nola are the two guys you're going to need to build this team around. Yeah. When you're going out for new free agents, if, if you look at it, for example, um, Bryce Harper yesterday was bowing to D.C., so it's obvious that he's not staying there after this season. So that's somebody we need to aggressively go after, get a third big name in there, I agree. and just build around these two guys who were the Phillies all season. I think the positive, one of the positives that I saw is the arm on Jorge Alfaro. I mean, there's not like a person in the run. <laughs> <laughs> in the league that could run on him. He threw out Trey Turner. Mm -hmm. He's and, fat. Like, and yeah, 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 Trey Turner's top yeah. three speed in the MLB. But um, and batting wise, I mean, Alfaro had like a 260 batting average. He did strike out a lot, but he that did. was known coming in. Mm -hmm. I think if he gets his power numbers up, we're good. Yeah, with him. I mean, that'll definitely be interesting yeah. given, given how young he is, how much of a cannon he has. Um, you know, looking at the duds real quick, guys, I mean, there are too many of them. You know, I put up. Uh, I put up Cesar for the amount of strikeouts he had as our leadoff hitter, and uh, and Oduble for just his, simply his inconsistency. You know, you look at that batting average, a 256 batting average is pretty good. It's okay, but the fact that he started out batting 350 and it drastically, slowly over time, you know, decreased. That's really concerning to me, and that that within itself is is making me question whether or not he'll be on the team next year. Um, so you guys, again. Agree with me or, I, or any other ideas? I have to agree with the Odubel point about his batting average dropping almost 100 points. This player fell, this, baser, this player basically fell off the earth. Uh, he had that 40 game on base streak going into the season and then all of a sudden you're not hearing about him anymore. So it's just, where did he go? Right. The, he needs to find his step again and if he can't do that either in the beginning of next year or at all next year, then he won't be here for long. Uh, I personally disagree with that solely because I think that's just going to happen with somebody younger. I think that's you're going to have those highs and lows, but I think he's somebody that I would like to keep around. I'm going to like to see him in the future because I think he has a lot of potential, but there are a lot of other negative assets on the team that I would rather not see next season Sure, or see improve. I agree with Sam. Um, in the beginning of the year, I liked him, obviously, because he was hitting 350 and he was always on base. but. I mean, just his lack of hustle. I mean, not lack of hustle, but lack of urgency, I would right. say, mm -hmm. is what bothers me. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's just going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting offseason. And uh, I want to see improvement. I want to see playoff baseball. I want to see us playing in October. And I want to see an improved team. I want to see a stacked Phillies team again. I want to see a, a nice solid core of, of pitchers, hitters, and bullpen guys that can, you know, relieve us of any stress. Uh, but that's going to do it for this bonus talk, and we hope you guys tune in next week. Have a great weekend.